All right, I will surrender the control of the laptop back to you. Uh, I'm Pixie. I'm Sun. And this is Nerd Talk. We're uh, here. It's a lovely Tuesday evening on the 4th of October. Yay. This is a thing. It's a thing. Looking at the Uber toilet on the Sims 3 store. You know, nothing good ever comes from us reviewing Sim games. You just become hopelessly addicted again, and your little dollhouse becomes more twisted each time. <laughs> hey, at, least just have, saying. at least I'll have to pay 15 bucks a month for it. Yeah, I suppose that's a thing. Your, your game of endless recurringness doesn't need a monthly fee. Yep. Although, oh boy, if it did. And and then every single time you get the whim to just make some bizarre thing, such as dollhouses based on D&D &D D &D characters. characters. So yeah, this is the thing. It's a thing, it's a thing, it's well, a thing, none it's of a them thing. have had sex with each other, so hey, I think we're off to a good start. Accomplishment so far? Um, yeah, so we're waiting for people in chat and hi Pyro. Always good to have you. I think you're just connected through your phone right now, but hey, if you're listening, that's great. <laughs> I don't know, pyro responses? Admissions? Um, so basically the reason we're talking about Sims stuff is because this week's review is for the Sims 3 Generations Expansion Pack. Triple A shooters? <laughs> Forget playing those. We tried to review Gears of War 3. We could not locate a copy. Twice. Yeah, and go before anyone says anything, going to your local GameStop and buying one... Yeah, we're not getting paid for this, and yeah. I've been really broke for the last month or two. That That's finally changing. Yep. So, until then, you know, I, this was something that I, I decided to buy on mostly a whim off of Amazon. And the Amazon downloader has actually been pretty neat, so... Yep, yep. Um, so I have this. And because I have a downloaded copy, I don't need to carry the disc around with me. Yay! Yay! Also, uh, you know, have a fancy gaming laptop, and so I can run it with all the specs on Max. Oh, the joys of hand-me-down computers. Especially hand-me-down gaming laptops, which is kind of unheard of. Basically, yeah. It's kind of awesome. Right? Lucky. Well, it was a gift. It's not, you know, your complete hand-me-down. It's not like it was just like, I don't know what it's sitting for. No, it was an, I have a super version of this, and so, yeah. You can have the old one. Just, just saying. I'd, I'd like a hand-me-down Uber rig. So yeah, it's a thing. We will also be doing a book review this week, cause I was surprised that this is news to me too. Sen had time to read something. Oh well, yeah, you're a teacher. You don't actually work. Burn. We will be discussing Jim Bernheimer's Confessions of a D-List Supervillain. Yeah, that's a thing. I remember you told me that you had started reading this, but I, I, yeah, I didn't know you had finished it already. Yep, I have totally finished this book. Okay then. Totally. We haven't great. reviewed a book since Mog World. I know. That's kind of sad. We should dedicate ourselves to reading more. Well, typically your reading list is whatever Mark is reading, right? Yep. And my reading list is usually whatever catches my eye in, in the Kindle store. Mm -hmm. So we just kind of go with that. And, like, the last few things I've I've read, I haven't felt the desire to discuss on Nerd Talk. Mm -hmm. But this is, like, specifically nerd-related. Admitted, the, uh, the uh, Felix Caster series of books by Mike Carey definitely could fit into Nerd Talk, but I didn't want to talk about a series of five books that I had read on my own starting, like, in college and then finished the last one last year. I would like to year. read them at some point, but... But I don't own a physical copy of the first book anymore because it was lent out, so that makes Oops. that kind of rough. Eh, so I shall have to yeah. find some other means by which to acquire it. Hello, 26Q. Welcome to chat. Um, let us know if everything's working right. Say hi. Hi is good. Uh, say Apple. Someone is jumping at the other <laughs> end of their keyboard. You realize that, right? Yes. You just, you just made everyone who is listening to us jump, at least who got the reference. It's good for you. I don't know. 26, can you hear us? Yay! Whatever. Chat box, go. All right, continue. Chat box, be commence with the chattings. 
So yeah, uh, we'll be discussing that, as well as some news stories, if we can manage to pull up some stuff. Yep. Oh, well, Pyro's here and paying attention, because he just changed the topic title. Either that or he's still just uh, connected through his phone and... I don't think he has a smartphone. I mean, he might be connected via his tablet, but... Possible. Of course, he also might be listening through his tablet. I don't know, that thing of speakers? I assume so. Man, I so want one of those. Someday. When I've got a real job. Yeah, anyway. I'm looking at odd statuses on Facebook. <sighs> Facebook and on the air. Hey, I am currently making the post for click people- Click that. Just click it. Ta-da! <laughs> Apparently I'm, I have to instruct him on how to Facebook. Yeah, I'm not good with the Facebook foo. I am better with the eBay foo, which I suppose we can discuss later. Yeah, my eBay foo is strong these days. Huh. And she's, like, threatening me with kung fu moves. <laughs> yeah, that's a thing. I, I'm menacing you. That's... <laughs> Just you... my Facebook foo against your eBay foo. 26, I think you're being generous with the five seconds remark. I don't think we were two seconds in before the comments about uh, Facebook foo came, or uh, about Uber toilets came up. By the way, I think you guys' chat is behind. There may be a delay. Maybe. Probably is. <laughs> oh, well. Happens sometimes. So yeah, I'm just gonna. Used to happen all the time when we were on WLRA, which we will be doing again for To Kill a DJ coming up this Tuesday, November eighth, from noon to six p.m. Uh, we will be doing a six-hour marathon. This broadcast. Tuesday. Tuesday, November eighth. I just said that. Okay. <laughs> Righto. Speaking of which, we didn't ha know that these had been slid under the door last week. So, whoops. so those of you watching the video chat can check out these totally sweet Pokemon sprites that uh, that were made for us by Awesome Sauce Sprites. She finally found a name for uh, her sprite service since she lost her previous one. Mm -hmm. So these are now Awesome Sauce Sprites, and uh, yeah, totally sweet. I know she's. Are you attacking me with a Squirtle? Maybe. <laughs> really? <laughs> Charizard, that. Ah. That's Charmander. There we go, Bulbasaur. There, now I've now I've got a strong combination. <laughs> also, the easy mode for the game, apparently, according to some people. Nub. Hello, light or line. No underscores. Hello, underscores. Welcome to chat. Welcome back. Nice to see you again. Thought we lost you for a bit there. It has since been discovered who underscores is, but I'm not going to tell you so that they can retain some of their mystique. So, he totally doesn't know! <laughs> yeah, I'm just updating the Facebook foo, getting it all ready. I don't think you hit send. Or post or whatever. Ah, okay. Still tapping. Whatevs. Do you suppose maybe we should get on with the review? Well, yeah, it's about that time, so let's get started. Okay, so Sims 3 Generations, expansion it's pack. It's PC only, like all the good Sims stuff. It's an expansion pack. Um, I think you can expect to spend between like 26 and $30, somewhere around there. Um, I got mine off of Amazon, because it was on sale. And I'm honestly not noticing, like, there, there, there have been basically no drawbacks to having a downloaded copy off of there versus the physical copies that I usually buy. So I'm really digging that. Is it's like, click on icon, and go. I mean, it took a while to download, but that's my internet for you. Um, so first I was just playing it for funsies and making D&D-based stuff. But then I decided I would get all serious business and make a... Um, basically, I just grabbed a pre-made household filled with pre-made sims. You know, default stuff. And I thought that I would play through them since, you know... The, the, there was a lot, the Keaton household, which was a lot with a husband and wife, and the wife was already pregnant, and so I'm like, hey, half the work's already done for me, and I don't even have to decorate the house. <laughs> so. You don't actually need to make the couple like itself. And so, I just jumped right into that, and got started, since most of the content for The Sims 3 Generations affects the, the process of aging, the, the 
Generations is about growing up. Um, and so it affects from, like, toddler age through childhood, teenagerdom, and, um, and on up from there. And so playing basic, playing the, the household I had originally made that was just full of young adults that had no interest in, like, romance or building families and were all like, careers, I, I didn't, you know, access any of the new content. And so this way I kind of forced myself into it. And Since you normally it, avoid children in this game like the plague that they are. It's interesting. I, I know from previous experience you are all about the young adults in The Sims. That, that is like your age bracket in this game. And then when they get any older, they're instantly like, no longer your favorite. Go go stand in the corner until you die. No, it's, I can still find a use for the adult Sims. It's the elder Sims that I kill off. Because at least the adult Sims can still make decent money? Yes. Wow. You know, we it's could... like you're taking up space. I need room for we, like, we could the air. We could design you like little Sims labor camps if you'd like. I actually did that once. Wow. Um, it was in The Sims 2. I basically built a mostly empty house. Well, it was just a lot with like a toilet and a fridge and a bed. And Why is it made... every time we get on stories of things you've done in The Sims, it gets horrifying? <laughs> <laughs> because that's how I roll. And I made eight adult male sims, and I gave them each different, you know, looks and personality traits and stuff. And basically I just let it go, and obviously they were going to run out of food eventually. But, um, yeah, like you did in The Sims 2, where you had to tell them, hey, you should restock this fridge, or you will die. And, uh, basically just let them have it out, and whoever was alive at the end, I gave, like, a nice house and a pretty girlfriend. <laughs> Wow. You make this game deserve the M rating. It doesn't have one, though. No, but it should. The way some people play this game. Oh, well. Moving on. So, uh, I did notice that a lot of the features that a lot of people think come with The Sims Generations were actually just added into the base game. Mm -hmm. Things like uh, body hair the lengthening of age brackets, those were all just added in basic. Patched. You can you can just p play those. Those were patched in. Um, also the boob slider in Create a Sim. Yep. Which I always, I had always felt needed to be there. In, in fact, there was a mod um, within the community to add that into The Sims 2. Because sometimes your Sims have large chests. Sometimes real people do. I suppose. That not everybody's one size. In fact, I'm still really upset that you can't adjust height. But of course, that would like cause animation conflict conflicts and stuff. Massive animation conflicts. But, so yeah, The Sims slightly less detailed than a Bioware game. Um, you know, I'm noticing there's there hasn't been any kind of upgrade to the graphics of the game. We are still no. running the same. Sims 3 engine that was released, what, 2004? I don't remember when it came out, honestly. Actually, I think it's 2003. Let me, uh, let me Google this. No, uh, Sims 3 didn't come out in 2000. I think it did. No. Not uh, in 2003. Sims 3. Because I was playing The Sims 2 after my parents had divorced and I was living with my mom. We're so. checking. Apparently, Sims 3 is 2009. Yeah, see? What am I thinking, then? Sims 2 might have come out around then. You're right, Sims 2 was 2003. Sims 3 is 2009. Got yeah. it. Because I was playing The Sims 2 post my parents' divorce. Thanks, Pyro. Good correction. So, yeah. Um, I'm noticing a lot of focus in this has been given to just... Well, everything relating to age has come up in this expansion. Yeah, um, the elder sims now have the option of carrying a cane as an accessory. To hit people with. I haven't gotten anybody to elder stage, Does so I'm not sure if that your sim have no lifetime desire? Uh, it's a teenager. Oh. They don't have those yet. Your um, teenage sim looks like an old man. <laughs> That's just his facial structure, and he inherited that from this guy. So So we're still proving that the Sims random generator can make some weird-looking Sims. 
Yeah, the genetics in this ca game are kind of odd. I, ca I also cannot get them to stop playing with the slip and slide. I literally can't get them to get away from it. Why would you not want them to play with the slip and slide? Because there are other things that need doing. Um, so but yeah. you have a slip and slide. That overrides every other desire. <laughs> I suppose like, you have Go a outside and use the slip and slide. So there's a, there's a few other things. I'm just going to go like in alphabetical order, basically, through um, sure. all the, the lesson things, which will basically cover most of what's new. Um, there's bachelor and bachelorette parties. Um, Which in The Sims is, of course, toned down to the teen-rated levels. Yeah, but they did an awful lot. Okay, nope. so Sims who are currently engaged to another Sim can throw a bachelor or bachelorette party. Okay. Um, you, obviously, uh, only it's young just adults... another party style. Only young adult Sims and older are allowed to attend these parties. Granny can come. Woo! <laughs> But don't bring the kids. Also, pretty sure that's a stripper. I doubt she's losing clothes. Uh, once the party has begun, you ask a good friend to kick off the party by making a toast. Um, there are also dancers. Uh, some of your friends may or may not have invited them to take the party up a notch. I, I'm reading this verbatim. You know, they're, they're EA is trying really, really hard to push the lines of what the around. Sims can do without crossing the teen barrier. They are dancing around that line. This is just basically strippers. The Sims 4 just has to jump it. Just say, you know what, forget it. We'll do whatever we want. We don't care. You'll still buy it. <laughs> um. So yeah, there's that. I... I have not as of yet gotten to play one of those, but, you know, from the trailer, they look kind of hilarious. This I have gotten to do, and it's kind of awesome. This is, like, the best idea they've had yet. Oh, yeah. Boarding schools! So, say you've got a child sim that you just don't want to deal with anymore. Ship or them off. Temporarily. You temporarily don't want to deal with them. Um, so, boarding schools. You can pick from a few different types of boarding schools, um, which train students in different skills, advocate certain traits... Um, it's kind of a crapshoot as to whether or not they actually get those. Yeah, they just have the chance of earning those. Yeah. So, um, we enrolled one child sim into the Le Fromage Art School, which was like the mid-range of expense in tuition. Um, you've got the Cheapo Schools, uh, School of Peace and Love and the Military School. Then you've uh, got the mid-range uh, Art School and Sports Academy, and then the expensive Prep School. School of Peace and Love. So that's the one that does nothing for you. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> they, they get, like, s special social interactions, can talk to other sims about their school or whatever once they graduate. But, um... And obviously those schools are going to try and instill certain traits in their children. So the, the we sent the one uh, child sim to a art school and it came back with the dramatic trait. Which, isn't that a negative trait? Yeah, that, that is all negative. There is nothing good about that trait. So, yeah. There's that. That sounds horrible. But hey, if you don't want to deal with your child sims, child and teenage sims, just ship them off and yeah, they will come back. You just pay the tuition, they go, you don't have to control them, you don't get to control them at all, and they basically just do their schoolwork and find their own crap. And so, they, they come back after they have age transitioned into teenager, at which point you can decide to send them off to boarding school again or not. Now, does it speed up the transition in any way? Do they go through all of the days they would be this age? I believe so. I, I believe that they go through all of the days that they were supposed to. And do they gain any friends through this? Any kind of uh, acquaintances or relationships? I'm seeing some sims that, like this one here. That you have no idea who that is? Yep. Okay, so they gain a couple of friend characters. It, yeah. I mean, there's... This okay. guy, obviously, not exactly major friend material, but... Well, it, it sounds like a good thing to do if you find yourself overwhelmed in the middle of a game, like... Like, if you've got, like, five, <laughs> like, between, like, five and eight sims in your household, and you're like, Out Darn, play. my sim keeps having twins. Go away. Um, no, I'm sorry, there is no School of Rock. That sounds like the Peace and Love School. Although I'm sure someone could edit that in. I, I, I do find that, the, that this is a great mechanic, though. 
yeah, it, it is and nice. If you can if, afford the tuition, do it cleans it. up a lot of problems with the game. All right, so next up, manually be like, do your homework, and go to sleep, and eat some food. Okay, um, there's now a chemistry lab table that you can use. Sounds dangerous. Um, so that the Sims can research formulas for new potions and then make potions. Um, it sounds like we are one step away from getting magic back in The Sims. There are ninja vanish potions, which teleport Sims home instantly, or ghost potions, which let Sims spend some time on the other side, unquote. Sweet. Does that temporarily turn them into a ghost or something? That would be my guess from the name. Um, there's a mood enhancer and a radical riparium potion that gives them mood an instant Mood enhancing candies. potion. It sounds like alcohol, if you ask Still me. Still boost. Um... Let's see. Sims who are adept in logic can mix potions into drinks. <laughs> which creates a mysterious drink that looks like water, but causes any Sim who drinks it to undergo the effects of the potion. So you can spike a Sim's water. Basically. Alright, then. Which kind of falls into, um, like, traps and pranks, but we'll get to that in a minute. Right. Uh, daycare, now an option. Um... I think Ambitions was the expansion pack that introduced the idea of, like, the self-made sim profession. Yeah. Where you can basically just, like, have them do stuff or perform services or whatever and not follow a strict career path, but, you know, perform services or create goods that, you know, cost them to gain money and you can register that as your sim self-employed profession to have the game keep track of things that way. Um, so there's a new profession, and it's called daycare. Um, so basically, uh, every weekday, a bunch of toddlers get dropped off at your house in the morning, and they stay until the parents pick them up in the evening. And your job basically becomes to feed, change, play with them, uh, buy toys, take care of them when their motives are low. Um, and if the kids are happy when the parents pick them up, um, you get tips and rewards and stuff. So wait a minute, this is for the Sims player that really likes the kids? Yes. And is just like, I would like to watch my entire neighborhood's kids and have to take care of all of their needs. Yes. Maybe I'm not a Sims player anymore. Um, there's actually, geez, a, that there's doesn't actually sound like a new fun. personality trait that goes <clears throat> with it, the nurturing trait. Sounds awful. That would make your <clears throat> Sim good at that particular job. Does it mean you have to do it less? The better the daycare specialist, the more kids and therefore more money will show up, including school-aged children coming by for after-school care. All right. And in order to get the best rating with them, you need to make sure they get their homework done. Um, there are also, like, crises that can happen on the job, like problem children and emergency weekend daycare. Emergency daycare? But you can unlock socials and rewards to help with it. You know, so as you get better, you get rewards and stuff and learn um, d specialized interactions that cause you to... You learn, the like, the solution game. action lollipop for Basically. the kid that won't stop crying? Um, here's one that creeped you out. Yeah, I hate this new new feature. The imaginary friend. This is terrible. So, it's, it's randomly drawn that sometimes as soon as your you know, sim gives birth to a baby, um... They get a toy in the mail. Okay. Um, this doesn't sound terrible yet. When the child ages to a toddler, they can play with it, sing, and name the toy. And those apparently, behind the scenes, dump into a relationship tracker for that doll. And then as the child ages up, the imaginary friend doll ages up. And I think at this point we should probably mention that this looks like a creepy patchwork clown. Yeah, so if you're the kind of person that the movie It terrifies, this is not for you. Like, I, I would be afraid if I were the one who owned this expansion that, like, I would never want to play this game again and never have kids in The Sims again. Because seriously, I don't want this creepy clown that only my child Sim can see walking around the house. <laughs> You can make them, like, clean up for you or fetch the child sim a snack, which is kind of neat, but it's creepy most of the time. It just follows them around, tries to interrupt their interactions with other people oh, it's, by getting it to pay attention to them. It's disturbing watching, like, you click around the house and 
click on the kid and watch him doing something with his imaginary friend, talking to it or having a pillow fight with it, and then when you click off of the sim, the clown disappears. It could be anywhere. You don't know. The parents don't know at all. It could be like plotting to kill the parents. And then when the child sim is away, like, it reverts into the doll form that it originated in. Which is and even waits. creepier! And the parents can see the doll, so I'm imagining how freaked out they must be watching this, like, basically this doll just pop in and out of existence all over their house. Yeah, seriously, this is, this is disturbing. Like, if they'd picked anything but the clown. I, I would have liked a dinosaur. That would have been cool. Right? And it, we know that they're capable of doing it. We've seen costumes before in The Sims that look like that. But no, we get creepy, creepy dolls. Yep. So, yeah, the special toy can uh, age up with the child and then turn into a life-size imaginary friend that only that owner sim can see and interact with. And if you want other sims for some reason to be able to interact with this imaginary friend, they can be turned real uh, either via opportunities, or are like kind of side quests that show up in The Sims 3, mm -hmm. or, or by uh, creating the imaginary friend metamorphium potion on that uh, aforementioned, that um, chemistry lab station that I mentioned earlier. Um, and in order to turn the sim real, they need to have a good relationship with their imaginary friend. So at that point, your creepy clown sim now really exists. Yeah, no, this is disturbing. Yeah, so that was creepy, and I would rather that not have been there, honestly. Right? I'm wondering if there's a way to specifically tell the game, no, I don't want this toy. Throw it away. Don't give it to the kid. Except I've tried, like, once it has the doll, I can't delete it. Yeah, this makes the me not want I've, to play The Sims anymore. The best that I've managed to do is to turn it back into doll form and then put it in that child sim's inventory so it doesn't, like, wander around and stuff. But does the friend still show up when the child is back? No, it's in his inventory. Okay, so the, the, the it's doll basically, won't show up. It is a it. doll in his pocket. So the and friend won't show around. up. Yes. Okay, that's a solution, I suppose. So it is just sitting in his pocket, basically, being a doll. I really have to wonder if, like, the sim gets too adult. Can the... Will the imaginary friend still be around that only the sim can see? Because that'll look like the guy has a psychosis or something. <laughs> I'm talking, like, drop-dead Fred material here. Stop following me! <laughs> What's wrong with that guy? Anyway... So, the next idea, uh, the next feature in The Sims 3 Generations is the Midlife Crisis, and I had a little bit of fun with this. Um, so, this is another <coughs> randomly generated thing. Basically, the second your sim ages from young adult to adult, there's a chance that they start to have a midlife crisis. And it sticks around for about a week, and basically, it, it, um, while they're going through a midlife crisis, they can complete special wishes. So these, these are wishes that show up, they're like in a red border on the like wish proposal screen thing, I don't know what, what the actual name for it is. Um, and if you complete, uh, for however many of those midlife crisis special, crisis special wishes you complete, um, you get like bonus rewards points for each one. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's a nice incentive. Okay, sounds good. Some of these are very bad ideas, for one. Such as you. buying a sports car when you can't afford it? Yes. Or uh, getting a tattoo or things like that. Um, and if See, you these all seem like personally uh, reasonable ones, but like I'm waiting for the one that's like, sleep with the neighbor. Um, <laughs> actually... Really now? <laughs> Anyway, um, so and if you if you decide, yeah, okay, I'll 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 I'll, I'll decide to do that because you have to promise the sim a wish in order to be able to get point rewards points for fulfilling it, and um, so if you decide to promise that wish to your sim, you can't remove it until it's been completed or until the crisis is over, and if if the crisis ends and you've promised them a wish that didn't get fulfilled, then they get like negative move penalties and stuff. They get super depressed about this. Mm -hmm. I didn't get to sleep with the neighbor this week. <laughs> God told me I would get to. <laughs> Basically is how that works. 
Um, so yeah, they complete special wishes that help them cling to their youth and earn extra lifetime happiness points as they enter the later stages of life. Okay, then. So yeah, you can't cancel this wish once it's been promised to them. Though. See the red border there? So that one's probably a buy a car worth at least this much money. And it's a ridiculous sum of money. Um, but yeah, and oh, when, you, when you've promised them that wish, they will take a moodlet hit until it is finished. Oh, that sounds terrible. So basically, yeah, I just kind of let it sit there until I'm about to do that thing and then promise them and then immediately complete it. Um, but if they can successfully complete their crisis, they get like bonus lifetime happiness points, a positive moodlet based on how many of those wishes they completed. So your sim's just basically going to be moody and want everything yes. until the midlife crisis is over. For like a week. Yes. Chat, you're scaring me. <laughs> Uh, there's no penalty for avoiding the crisis wishes if you choose not to promise them at all. Okay, so you can just ignore that this is happening entirely. It's just an optional side quest thing that you and can And if you decide that this is too much pressure, you can send them to the hospital for therapy and end the crisis early. The Sims pushing the barrier on what you should put your people through. Basically. Wow. Oh, they've, they've reinstated, there was a memory system in The Sims 2 that basically didn't do much. Which, this version of it also allows you to social network, because what doesn't these days? Um, so now if you go into The Sims, like, personality tab, there's a button for a scrapbook, and you can see, like, different, it auto-saves memories for significant events, like, hey, had a baby, or, you know, picked up my child for the first time. And if you're if you have selected that sim at the at that moment where it saves the memory, it will automatically capture a screenshot. All right. And not just a screenshot of whatever you happen to be looking at at the time. It will go and find a shot of like your sim's face, basically. Okay. Which is neat. Or like this is a shot of the library or whatever. Let's see. I, I wasn't, you know, looking at this right here. I, I was somewhere over there. But because I still had him selected, it went and found him and took a picture. Okay, so it's actually pretty can, good at collecting can, memories. Yeah, and so you can set, if you if you don't have them selected at the time, then it'll just put up a generic, like, clip art picture, basically. Mm -hmm. And you can put a custom caption there, or it'll just put a default one, and you can decide to share them on Facebook. Because my Facebook friends really care what I'm doing with my little fake people. Some people are into that. And so it's kind of neat. I assume, like, people who are really into tell storytelling through their sims will probably be into that. I suppose. Or if just, you know, towards the end of, you know, an elder sim's life, you want to go look through it all and... Go, oh, man, I ignored you the last few years. Basically. So yeah, that's the midlife crisis, and those are the memories. Okay. Uh, now we get to pranks and booby traps. Yay! Your sim now has a thing for that. Uh, child and teen sims can pull pranks and set traps for unsuspecting sims at home and about town. Um, we would normally call this vandalism. So you can do this with different objects around about. Like, um, let's select the teenager sims so I can pull these up. Like, you can click the computer and set a booby trap so that the computer has something scary on it. <laughs> Man, I'm thinking what that is actually making reference to in real life. Let's see. This is where you change the background of your computer to something particularly horrible. You can set a whoopee cushion on the couch or a chair. Your um. teen sim is evil. He just wants to, like, rig everything. Well, it's just an option. Whoopee cushions... I'm just clicking on things and seeing what I can find prank options for, basically. Oh, here's one. You can put dye in the shower. That's always a good one. Or set a trap for someone. Define trap. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, pull that back up. So yeah, there's, there's a few different options for that. That would be the phone that I forgot to turn on silent. <laughs> Whoopsies. Okay. So, on a residential lot, they can set traps on different, like, objects and appliances. Like the toilet! 
which they can set to basically because trapping a massive flood. Trapping public toilets is always fun. Uh, around town, they can play pranks on members of the community, different public locations, and at their neighbors' houses. So I'm I'm pretty sure you can actually do the flaming pile of poo on the doorstep prank. Because this is just what The Sims was missing. I still can't have a cat or dog. You can, as of like what the next, next week, expansion, two weeks from now. Yeah, it comes out. So they are really pushing out these expansions. Like Generations came out only a couple months ago. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there's that. I I I don't think I'm going to be using it much because I kind of have an investment in trying to make the Sims as happy as possible. So unless I have like an evil Sim or something. <laughs> I don't think it'll be much of a thing I'm going to be playing with. Yeah. Prom, which is what I was trying to get to, but we ran out of time before the show started. Um, so, teenagers can attend prom. They can do that now. So when prom season rolls around, um, they can uh, they can decide to just basically go um, with their friends, or they some of them sometimes they'll have like a wish to you know go with a date or something. Some so. They might get asked to prom, or they could try asking somebody else, or basically along the lines of asking somebody on a date, but whatever. Um, so there's that. Uh, prom arrives, they get a ra- reminder, kind of like, um, your, hey, the carpool for work is going to show up. They get a reminder like that, that, hey, you should probably get changed. <laughs> and then they show up in the limo, and... They get their photo, photo taken. Yeah, photo taken which will show up in their inventory. It's just kind of another party event for The Sims that um, spawns a lot of lifetime get, yeah, wishes. Yeah, they, uh, they could, you know, be crown- coronated as prom queen or king. Um, so they get a special object, like a tiara or whatever, that shows up in their inventory. Again, you can decorate the house with it. Um, there's also the potential for negative memories at prom, like getting in a fight, getting ditched by the date, getting shot down on the dance floor, other such things. And since we've got the options for pranking uh, with child and teen sims, of course there's going to be the option for punishment. Right. Um, Fighting with their siblings, missing school, pulling pranks are just a few of the things that uh, can get a sim in trouble with their parents. This is funny. So now you can ground your sim by making them stand facing a wall. Um, So most of the time they'll be scolded by an adult for most offenses, but the more trouble they cause, the more severe the punishment. So disobedient sims can be banned from playing with their favorite stuff, um, put in timeout, or grounded. All right. Uh, So to get back into the good graces of their parents or guardians, they can, you know, help around the house or beg for forgiveness or try and basically get the... Uh, adult sim to lay off. Right. They also added this other mechanic that's kind of weird. Because um, basically you've been able to take videos, like short clips of videos, of your sims for, like, ever. Okay. And people make machinima with them or whatever. But um, Now the sims can be... You know, it's, it's less breaking the fourth wall-ish. And um, they can record home videos with, like, an actual camcorder. So will this feature actually bring you into, like, the sim level view yes. of the situation. Mm-hmm. Well, that's kind of neat. So you buy the video camera, and the, the depending on how expensive of a one you buy, that affects how long of a video you can record and the quality of the playback. Because um, you can watch the videos on the television at home. Well, I guess that's neat. And so yeah, you use the video camera. You enter a first person perspective, capture your shots. You can actually around. walk around as you're sitting in this mode? Yes. That's kind of the cool, The timer will actually. count down the amount of time you can record before the camera automatically shuts off. And then once the recording is done, a disc gets placed in your Sims inventory that can be played on certain televisions. Alright then. Uh, you can name the discs to help organize them. And, um... Or you can pr- you can buy a uh, data disc... Your Sims, rather, can buy a data disc storage tower which can hold a whole bunch of the videos. So basically like an external hard drive. That's kind of neat. I like that more than just, hey, here's the video of what I saw from this view. Mm -hmm. For people who are really into recording their sims, that would actually be kind of a cool thing. So, yeah, kind of neat. All right, so... Basically most of the, there's like new interactions, like I said, new professions. So how much did this expansion run? 
Um, I think I, I, I'm pretty sure I paid less than thirty, but. Okay, well, let me see. I have to save and quit now because I had the thing up so that I could look at stuff. No, it's a full fledged expansion, so it looks like it's a thirty-five dollar one. Yeah. Well, I managed to get it on sale and also as a digital uh, download. All right. And so I ended up getting it for less. So what do you think? Worth it? It's got some interesting parts. I don't know that I would pay like 40 for it, but 25-30 does sound fair. Cuz yeah. you it's it's I know a lot of people were like you don't even get a new town, you don't get like new rabbit holes or whatever. This is, you know, com this doesn't deserve to be called it like standalone expansion pack, but you do get a lot. It's just some very small things. It's a feature expansion yeah, instead of a stuff expansion. And um, in that sense, like it's it's if if you don't play like the full gamut of a Sims life given Sims lifetime, you're gonna miss out on a lot of those features certainly. And so this really is for people who like like to build basically legacies with their Sims. All right then. And so I've been having some fun with it. I haven't had enough time to play it as much as I would like. But I do plan on continuing to play it, and I don't feel like, ah, that I bought it, so. All right, then. Fair enough. So, shall we move on? <laughs> Public toilets are already a trap. Thank you, Cantaloupe. Yep. That was pretty hilarious. Uh, chat. I so, love yeah. chatters. Uh, we're going to switch gears and talk about a book that Sen read. So, I was on my Kindle, having recently finished reading, uh... Max Brooks's Did World we are going to end up following your hot clock at all, by the way? No, no, my hot clock is completely invalid. <laughs> um, so I just finished rereading World War Z, like, the third time on my Kindle, and was looking for something else to read, and I saw in my recommendations this uh, 2 dollars book for download, uh, Confessions of a D-List Supervillain, by uh, Jim Bernheimer. So, um, essentially what this is, is it's a first-person account of a supervillain who ends up saving the world simply by virtue of he was the last person in it who could. And he moves on to near-celebrity status as he tries to remake himself into less of a villain than he is. At no point is he trying to be good. Which is kind of the entire point of the story. Um, the main mm -hmm. character's name is uh, Calvin Stringle, also known as Mechanical. Uh, Superhero-wise, think of him as a like a third-rate Crimson Dynamo at best. We're talking about a character who is wearing a super suit, has no actual physical powers and doesn't really have the funds to be what you'd consider like an Iron Man. Pretty much all of his parts are either stolen or paid for through, like, third-rate weapon design. So we're not really talking about any kind of powerhouse. Like, this guy got beaten up by a hero who was known for playing his sonic bugle. Man, when's the last time you've heard of a bugle? A sonic bugle, no less. In the hands just, of a any, superhero. Like, the last time I remember somebody mentioning a bugle in any fashion were like those little like corn chip things that were shaped like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the chips. Cones. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like Cal as a character is, is really interesting just for how human he is. Like he's really well written. He he is a guy who is stuck in this world full of superheroes and genuinely does not care about that fact. He's like, yeah, I'm just here to make money and get through my life. He became a supervillain by accident because he had his designs stolen by the company he was working for and then was fired from them. And then because of their no competition clause, he couldn't get legal work anywhere. And so he ended up becoming a supervillain, like you do. I'm going back and reading the backlog of chats that I missed while I had The Sims 3 running, and it's pretty great. You guys are you guys are on top of it today. Iron Man doesn't need to be rich to build the initial suit, but being rich definitely helped him make the new versions. 
What he built in the cave was not, in fact, what he was wearing at the end of the, the two films. Also, I'd like to point out that, you know, the power source itself was incredibly expensive. Yeah, because he did have to take apart, like, what, 12 missiles to build that? Yes. So, yeah, being rich does help. Um, so, no, without a significant chunk of money to begin with, he could not have built the suit at all. And if we're specifically talking about Ultimate Iron Man, he needs a crew of about 100 people to get into and then out of that suit. Like, this is a team effort to, to function with this one hero. Um, so, the fact that Cal manages to do these things on his own is rather spectacular. Uh, so, at the start of the book, he is the last person left on Earth who has not been infected by this supervillain scheme gone wrong that resulted in the entire world being taken over by these mind control bugs, which attach themselves to the back of people's neck. <laughs> And were, like, just going around the world doing what they were programmed to do, which was set up these factories to make weapons of mass destruction. Cal didn't get infected because he was hiding in his suit and the bugs couldn't get in. Every other hero got taken over. Well, then. So the very start of the book is him accidentally freeing one of the Olympians, kind of the Justice League of this world, mm -hmm. who were given their powers by the Greek gods. Uh, he accidentally frees Aphrodite and drags her back with him. Because he doesn't want her revealing where he was when she caught up with him. So, he then ends up saving the world by freeing other heroes. And suddenly finds himself really famous, yet still really hated by everyone for what he used to be. Because everyone remembers him as Mechanical, this really stupid villain who never got it right. Mm -hmm. And so, as the story progresses, he goes through the hoops and finds out just what these heroes really are, which of course they're terrible people. They're, they're all capitalistic and backstabbing jerks. All of them. And so as they try to rebuild the world, just nothing goes right for Cal. Okay then. Um, I will say... Is this part of a series or a standalone? This, is, this seems to be a standalone. Now, it's actually listed here on Amazon as Volume 1, which I don't know what that's all about. Because the story I read definitely seems to be a complete story. I, I can't imagine this is going to continue. Like, it it concluded very uh, finally. I, I don't suspect there are going to be more of these written. Her, her. Thank you, chat. Funny. Um, I really respect the writing of all the characters in this. So Aphrodite is... She's a, a well-written female character. And, and you'd think that would be hard to believe, being that she is effectively the Greek love goddess, but that she's played off as a very uh, normal person. And by love, we mean, you know... No, she <laughs> really does charge her powers through sex. <laughs> Just saying that, that those two aren't exactly mutually inclusive. Yeah, um... But you meet other interesting characters, so Ultra Weapon, which is kind of Cal's rival, the Iron Man character of this world, is interesting and fun in his own flawed way. He, he's a colossal jerk. He, so is regular Iron Man. Well, picture Iron Man down on his luck and, like, having had your ex-girlfriend taken by one of your, like, absolute least favorite people in the world, which would be Cal who he does blame for, like, stealing all of his technology and just being a cheap knockoff. So, like, he just progressively gets worse as the story goes, which is understandable. Um, yeah, all the heroes and villains are just interesting characters. They are well-written. I, I liked Wendy, the the leader of the Gulf Coast Guardians, who Hal ends up, or Cal ends up working for. She, she's a very cool character who is trying to adapt from being just a team player to being the leader of a team. Um, th there's some really weird characters like uh, Imaginary Larry. This, he's, is he a clown? Cause... No, he's a guy who has the power to create telekinetic constructs and also has multiple personality disorder. So his personality that's in charge mo uh, most of the time is trapped in this delusion that he's still in high school. And so all of his constructs are like high school stereotypes. So like Cal ends up fighting with him because he completely loses it and like 
Larry is spawning the jock to tackle him out of the air, and of course he's hitting like a truck because that's what the, the jock did in the high school stereotype. Um, he's getting having the archery squad shoot at him. And Cal and Wendy end up defeating him by basically playing along with the act and pretending to be in a high school movie to get Larry to calm down. Okay, then. It, it's really well-written superhero uh, prose, which really impresses me because I didn't think you could do that well. I, I always thought, you know, the superhero genre belongs in the comic book. It belongs in the art plus text category. But this is a well-written book. Um, Bernheimer has done a really great job of capturing what a comic is in his writing. And the, the whole thing is told through the first person's perspective of Cal. And you really get into Cal's head as to what he's thinking and how he takes advantage of all of these situations. Because he's, he's ever the schemer. He's always trying to put something in his uh, favor. And it works. It, it's really enjoyable. For two ninety nine, I cannot recommend this book highly enough. I had a blast with it. It's short. It's it's simply written. By no means are you going to find the text complicated. The action scenes are well enough written that you could follow what's going on, uh, shot for shot, hit for hit. Um, yeah. Overall, I I thought this was a great read, and recommend it to anyone who has a Kindle or has access to a Kindle store. I think they have that on pretty much every device now, so there's really no reason not to throw down the two ninety nine and, and give this a read. Or if you're still a fan of books in this paper form, uh, Amazon's currently hosting it for eight ninety nine. Which is like what only five bucks more. Yeah, but still, if you can get it for two ninety nine, there really is no reason not to. And and this is proving my theory that you know those. Those authors that probably wouldn't get published in in standard paper format because their their books are a little bit uh, what you'd call niche. I, I really think this is the format for them. This is what will work. That hey, you just want to put your book out? Great, we'll host it. Anyone can download it. It's fine. It's never going to go out of print. I I think that's awesome. Are you looking over your Old Republic pre-order? Yes. Wow. So yeah, um, that's uh, Confessions of a D-List Supervillain. If you're at all into the superhero genre, or even the superhero deconstruction that you know Garth Ennis and uh, Warren Ellis are so favorite, famous for, totally get into this. I think uh, anyone could have fun with this book. So yeah, um, anything else news-wise this week? I mean, I guess I could give an update on how uh, League of Legends is going, since we're still not ready to review it. Um, I guess if if you're at all interested in League of Legends, this would be a great week to jump in because like there are so many cool characters available this week, and I'm sure next week is going to have a, another set of the really cool ones because like season or week one and two were the basic characters, mm -hmm. the really simple ones, and now that we're in week three and four of the preseason, I think they're really going to throw out the cool characters for people to play as. So, like, three of the characters I was considering actually throwing down money to buy are going to be available this week to play. Are you sending recruiter friend messages? No, I'm sending friend request messages. All right, then. So, uh, yeah, unless you have anything else to add, I think we're going to end for this week. Next week, we will probably re be reviewing a shooting game. Um, whether that's Gears of War 3 because everyone else will be done with it, or... Rage, Rage, which just came out this week. So today? Yep. Or, hey, I might even have the cash and motivation to pick up a copy of Disgaea 4 again. Funny story behind that. <laughs> yeah, for another time. Or maybe the Nerd Talk post chat. Alrighty. So, um, I guess that's it for this week. In the meantime, I'm Pixie. I'm Sun. And you've been listening to Nerd Talk. We'll Bye, catch folks. you next week.